Hello, 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 everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and staying safe. Welcome to the session on building an observability and monitoring roadmap feature. I am your host for the session, and my name is Chinmay Gaikwad. I am a technical evangelist here at Epsagon. Uh, a few housekeeping items. Please stick around till the end. There is a special offer for you. So a bit about myself. Uh, I have had a very interesting journey so far, uh, right from working at large scale companies such as Intel and IBM uh, to working at smaller startups as well, one of which is Epsagon, where I'm at currently. Hobbies include traveling, soccer, uh, exploring restaurants, and playing video games. These days, however, it's just restricted to uh, video games. I'm really looking forward to resuming traveling as soon as the COVID situation is over. So let's get um, into our session. In this session, we'll look at how microservices have become the new normal and what challenges have come in the forefront because of this. We will also look at uh, how you can specifically address those challenges in, observe, in, in, in achieving full observability in highly distributed architectures. Lastly, we'll also discuss what a good observability solution should look like. So let's start with a bit of context on microservices. Hand in hand with the evolution of software, there has been a massive shift to the microservices architecture as well. Today, around 85% of enterprises are adopting microservices as their default architecture. You might have observed that these highly distributed modern architectures are more typical than ever today. Applications are now being built in the cloud rather than being built in data centers or hardware owned or leased by companies. These modern applications are highly distributed. That is the application code is broken down into smaller or lightweight services, which can be thought of as mini apps. Each one of them is independent of each other. So there is no mo one monolithic bundle of code for the application. Microservices architecture obviously has great benefits. However, these easy to depict architecture diagrams with monoliths started to become much more complex because of microservices. That has brought about unique challenges. Let's see why enterprises are moving to microservices in the first place. According to a report published in 2020, scalability, speed of development, and decreased system administration time are the top reasons. I'm sure uh, most of you fall in at least one of these buckets. Scaling microservices is extremely easy and can be done in seconds. It definitely increases your speed of development and allows you to utilize your resources more, much more efficiently. As we saw, modern applications now have thousands of services with databases, caches, and even more. So visibility into these have become increasingly complex. Using only traditional monitoring solutions, it can be nearly impossible to know what is going on under the hood. So let's see how we can dis uh, troubleshoot distributed applications. We should start by understanding what observability and monitoring exactly are. Monitoring tells you if the system is working. Observability lets you ask why it is not working. Observability basically involves instrumenting systems and applications to collect relevant data. Thus, observability and monitoring go hand in hand. In my opinion, observability is not just a tool. It's a must-have culture for any organization. It is important for all, right from developers to the C-suite. The three pillars of observability are very well known. They are metrics, logs, and traces. Uh, we will discuss tracing later in our session. Let's start with metrics. Metrics are a great way for operations to figure out if something has gone wrong in your system. Examples of some metrics include CPU usage or memory usage, Whereas you also have business level metrics that include bounce rate, revenue, or click-through rate. Logs, on the other hand, can tell us why something has gone wrong. But when you're running hundreds or thousands of microservices, these alone are not enough. Let's see why. Let's consider an example for the session of a virtual shop. As you can see, the HTTP server authenticates requests using Auth0 and pushes them to a Kafka stream. 
a Java container pulls the stream and updates the DynamoDB table. Let's say there was a situation where users complain about orders that were sent but not handled. Where would you uh, probably start? Maybe using some APM tools, right? Traditional monitoring solutions come at the expense of higher resource utilization and have the ability to only collect host metrics. So that doesn't really help pinpoint the problem. The very nature of container serverless means that it is likely to leave gaps in the coverage with respect to your traditional observability solution. Metrics, as we have discussed, really only let us know that something has broken, but not where or why. Context is absolutely critical in today's environments. So using the traditional way, first you start looking at Kafka metrics. Then you would look at DynamoDB metrics. You see that there are a few spikes here, so you definitely know there is something wrong. So we need to debug more. To effectively troubleshoot, we need more data. And more data means logs. But are logs sufficient? And what gaps in the coverage they leave? We all know what logs look like. Personally, I have a love-hate relationship with logs. I love the fact that they are there and available whenever I want them, but I hate digging through them. Often I found myself quickly scrolling over dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of lines of log codes. I remember sitting and watching the live tale of logs just to understand where that outlier is that I want to spot. What if I knew the exact path a request is taking through individual services and components? Logs are good to deal with monoliths, but they don't work as a starting point in highly distributed applications. While log aggregators help bridge the gap of centralization, on their own, logs still lack the context to an event or a metric you're tracking. Logs are also heavy and poorly structured. Hence, it is even more challenging to determine what's going wrong. So in our virtual shop example, if you're very lucky, you, you will be able to spot the problem, but it will definitely take a very long time. So let's recap of what are the things that are missing. It essentially boils down to correlation. Correlation between metrics and logs and between different services. The correlation relation will help us find the exact problem. So how do we correlate these pieces? That's where distributed tracing comes into picture. I'm sure most of you must have heard about distributed tracing lately. Many vendors offer some kind of distributed tracing. Even service meshes such as Istio and Linkerd now offer support, support for them. There are also dozens of open source solutions out there. However, where did it all begin and why? Distributed tracing was born out of Google over a decade ago, and it allowed engineers to trace a specific path a request makes to services. In effect, it helps shine the light on the needle in the haystack that logging or metrics can miss. Just because your application is made up of 15 or 20,000 services doesn't mean that a request will travel through every single one of them. At best, it will travel through a fraction of those services. Distributed tracing solution has numerous benefits. Let's look at an example of how you can visualize APIs and microservices using a distributed tracing solution. A typical architecture has a number of microservices involved. And one of the most important features of an observability solution is visualization. Users should also expect actionable data within these complex visualizations and service maps. As we zoom in or filter on specific components, users should have the ability to start seeing latency between these components and areas where thresholds have been crossed. Metrics should also be present to provide some context of what is going on. When issues are identified in your application, a distributed tracing-based solution should focus the visualization down to narrow scope of the services that are in focus. It should also be able to filter just the downstream components. This would help to take out the guesswork in determining the impact of the outage. So you can know where the latency is being seen or understand uh, precisely what error occurs. 
without smart filtering capabilities, an architecture map just becomes an exercise in chaos theory. So now back to our previous example of the virtual shop. As you can see, a distributed tracing solution would help you narrow the downstream components down. Here, uh, the focus view of the trace can immediately ID the problem. In this case, it is the missing key ID. Which key ID though? Looking at the detail of the Kafka microservice stream, you can see that the username is missing. Now, when you focus on the Auth0 microservice, you see why is it missing exactly. It is because of an expired token. So specifically for Auth0, you now know that you should be using refresh tokens as the current access token has expired. So in short, this reduces your mean time to detection and resolution by quite a lot as compared to traditional monitoring solutions. Another benefit of a distributed tracing solution is to pinpoint where time is being spent in the code. Here is an example of spans, which makes up a trace. Spans tell us if a significant portion of our time is being spent waiting for an external API call to respond, or perhaps we have an inefficient database call that is being made that needs refactoring. At Epsigon, our waterfall visualization can also provide you with rich context of header metadata to troubleshoot real applications in real time. At a business level, we not only need to look at traffic from an application holistically, which of course is important, but we should also look at it in the context of each service and each component. In this example, we have the payment service that handles all of our processing and the traffic there drops down to zero. That's a huge problem. Even if the traffic in every other service of our application is fine. And so we need to have the flexibility to slice and dice the data in n number of ways. We may also want to look at traffic at an application level, at a service level, or even at a resource type level. It's going to be a similar story uh, when it comes to errors. Not all errors are the same. An error that is critical in service A might be ignored in service B. And so again, when it comes to really understanding the error state of an application, you need to be able to look at it from n number of different viewpoints. Maybe that's breaking it out by error code. So for example, a user being rate limited is important information, but it's not as critical as seeing a number of 500s, for example. Further, we may want to be able to look at errors, not only based off error code, but also exception type. So there are a number of ways you want to visualize back and understand errors throughout your system. And it's a good observability solution to allow you to do just that. So with all this information, you also want to be able to monitor and alert on many kinds of metrics, metrics from your own system, metrics from the cloud provider, or let's say Kubernetes-based metrics. Let us look at some of the tracing solutions that are out there for you to try. There are some open source solutions out there. With distributed tracing, you have frameworks such as Jaeger and Zipkin. Recently, OpenTelemetry has tried to tie these pieces together. These are the frameworks that are to be followed and utilized. I really love the work that the open source community is doing uh, to promote these frameworks. Although they are immensely helpful in pinpointing the issues uh, in highly distributed environments, uh, they, come up, they come with a significant development effort. This slows down the key developer velocity, which we all hope for. Furthermore, they oftentimes lack the key visualization necessary to trace the exact path request travels. So it just limits you to uh, a few simple waterfall graphs, which are not really useful for troubleshooting in great detail. Additionally, they lack the key correlation between metrics and logs and don't necessarily provide you with the ability to search for specific data within API calls. Let's see how one can instrument using open telemetry. In distributed tracing, you would want to instrument each and every API call that your, uh, so that your code can create these things called spans, which make up a building block for trace. A span represents work done by a single service with time intervals and associated metadata. 
you should collect and include in all your spans the relevant information, including payloads uh, in many cases. By injecting and extracting identifiers from spans and API calls, you can correlate spans from remote services as well. There are also some managed observability solutions out there. Of course, I'm going to talk about our solution. So we at Epsigon have one of the best distributed tracing solution, which is super easy to use and is low key, low code. It can run in any modern microservices environment, including Kubernetes, ECS, and serverless. You can also correlate metrics, traces, and logs with complete payload visibility, which is super important. And finally, it is an end-to-end -end solution, which can be used to troubleshoot across different business units, teams, such as operations and development. Security and privacy is super critical to any observability solution. Our founding team has come from a heavy security background. That is why we have made an effort to be ISO and SOC certified. We are also GDPR and HIPAA compliant. Observability should be uh, top of mind for every organization by now, and it shouldn't come at the expense of business or developer velocity. Epsagon takes a fully automated approach to our instrumentation with minimal maintenance requirements. Our agents can collect data from any component within your stack. Whether it's a service running in a container or function as a service or even our traditional VMs. We don't require separate agents for uh, monitoring or uh, creating traces uh, from these environments. We're able to do this uh, all with a rich context across metrics, logs, and traces, and also allow you to search full payload or custom tags. Observability should not only tell you that something has gone wrong, but, but pinpoint where and why to help you reduce your mean time to detection and resolution. As a user, you should plan your observability journey well in advance. First of all, you should have clarity on the business goals as well as the architecture model. Then you need to determine which approach works for you, whether it's DIY or whether it's managed. Both have their pros and cons and they can suit in a particular scenario. Then you have to implement the observability solution. So for example, for DIY, you have to take into account that there is significant development effort required in advance, whereas for manage, it might be quite a simple integration. And the final and the most important point is ensuring scalability of the observability strategy. As we have seen, microservices can scale really fast. So the observability solution has to keep up with the microservices. And that's why the scalability of a micro observability solution is super critical. So to summarize everything we have covered in this session, we saw that distributed microservices architectures come with their own unique benefits and challenges as well. Observability through metrics such as throughput or simply seeing the response time aren't enough to determine where the issue is and don't provide us with the value necessary to keep our environments healthy. Distributed tracing with context helps tell a story of where, when, and why a user has encountered an error. Finally, observability helps us to get visibility into our architecture, reduce mean time to resolution, and reduce a bunch of costs associated with our software platform. I would like to end this session by saying that observability should be critical priority for your organization by now, but it shouldn't come at the expense of business or developer velocity. A great observability solution helps shift our mindset from being reactive to being proactive. And that's my session for today. Uh, so as I mentioned before, there is a special offer for you. So please click on that link and then um, have fun. Thanks.